women, 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 women. I tell you, they make, they make me sick like I have never been sick before. I take it then, Dr. Alberts, that you aren't looking forward with a great deal of pleasure to the annual visit of the wives of our dear trustees. Oh, every year I get a headache. Every year it is the same thing. Those women, why must they come here, disrupting our birth? Oh, excuse me, please. Of course. Hello, hello. Yes, yes, this is Dr. Alberts. What? Sandwiches? Sandwiches for what? Is this a research laboratory or a restaurant? All right, all right, order the sandwiches. Maybe if they eat, they go away faster. Yeah, yeah, I leave everything to you. Goodbye. <laughs> sandwiches. <laughs> For some reason, your annual tour of inspection always gives the ladies an appetite. Isn't that true? Ah, I tell you, it makes me sick. They look in the test tubes. Do they understand what is in them? No. But every year they come, every year is the same foolish questions. Every year is the same waste of time. The wives of the trustees. Home, they should stay. Now then, what were we discussing? The end of the world. Ah, ah, yabo, yabo, that article on the end of the world. You were saying that it is your belief that the rotation of the Earth would gradually slow down until someday the Earth would stop entirely. Yeah, yeah, and then... Yeah, and when that day comes, it will mean the end of all human life, inevitably. Six months of unbelievable cold, and then six months of unbelievable, unbelievable heat. Finished everything. But why, Doctor? I mean, why should the Earth stop rotating? It whirls in a frictionless vacuum, doesn't it? Yeah, but there are influences which drag it back, particularly the tides of the oceans. Eventually, just as the moon's revolutions have stopped, so will the Earth. And then, for man, calamity. Of course, that will all happen, oh, maybe 2,000 million years from now. Oh, well, that's a relief. 2,000 million years. Well, it gives me a little time. Uh, just to clean up a few loose ends. <laughs> I don't know why I waste time with you. You are like the other reporters. Nothing but wisecracks and foolishness. Oh, no, no, Dr. Alberts. I didn't mean to. <laughs> it's all right. I need more wisecracks in my life. You are a fine woman, Lewis. Never have you distorted what I have told you to make sensationalism for the headlines like most of the other newspaper men have. You have always been honest with me, and I like you. Thank you, Doctor. Now, then, for this symposium of what scientists predict for the end of the mankind, you might also say that I predict that the end of mankind will come with the sensation of the Earth's rotation, because at that time, one side of the Earth will always be hidden from the sun, and consequently will be covered with an ice cap hundreds of miles thick. On the other hand, the side that always faces the sun will be heated to a point where everything will be burned down to a great desert of red-hot rocks. Wow. But that is not all. Between the hot and cold sides of the Earth, there will be a sort of twilight zone, not affected by the direct blasting heat of the sun. But if you think future man could live in this section, think again. Life would be impossible. Great, tearing hurricanes moving hundreds of miles an hour will never stop from the sunny side of the world to the cold side until finally, after hundreds of years, the air itself is frozen up and there can be no more winds. Say, that's quite a picture. You can quote me as saying further that of only one thing in the future Leon Alberts is absolutely positive of, and that is that the end of the world, from mankind's standpoint, will not occur until at least 2,000 million years have passed. And that, when the catastrophe does occur... Excuse me, please. Come in. Beg your pardon, Dr. Albert. Yeah, yeah, what is it? The ladies, sir. The trustees, wives, sir. Well, well? They want you to show them the mechanical heart, sir. Mechanical heart? I knew it. I knew it. Oh, Mrs. Lewis, why is it? The minute a visitor comes into the Institute by the way, the first thing they must see is the mechanical heart. Well, after all, the idea of a heart beating away and having life outside of a body, oh, it is rather intriguing. Yeah, yeah, but this is an Institute of Research, not a sideshow. Shall I tell the ladies you won't? Who says that I won't? Come along, Mrs. Lewis. You will see me in my annual role as, how you say it, sideshow barker. Come along. All right. 
If you give me the rest of my article on the end of the world as soon as you're through. The end of the world? What does that matter when the wives of the trustees want to be entertained? Women, women, women. Ah, they make me sick. They make me sick like I've never been sick before. <laughs> Why do you think it's the most exciting thing? I just love the way Dr. Abbott wears his hair. I simply love it. A mechanical heart. Oh, I think it's simply marvelous what modern science is doing. Even if I don't understand a thing about it, not a single thing. You hear them, Lewis? Was it for this that the first organism that was eventually to become man struggled its way out of the protozoic slime 800 million years ago? Oh, I wish I could help you out, Doctor. Here we are, Dr. Alberts. Now, the ladies are simply dying to hear your masterly exposition of the artificial heart, or whatever you call it. Oh, uh, or this young lady, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. This is Mrs. Lewis, with one of the newspapers. Ah, oh, a reporter. How interesting. I'm Mr. John C. Hallop. H-A-L-O-P. Yeah, yeah, if you please, in here. Oh, well, of course. <laughs> Why, this way, ladies, uh, the dear doctor is ready for us. Oh, my, isn't everything just neat and clean? Look at all the bottles, just like my own pantry. Oh, where's the heart? I don't see any heart. Quiet, ladies, quiet. Please, please, if you please. Oh, uh, this table here, if you will step this way. I, I don't see any heart. Where's the tubes and glassware? Where's the heart? Oh, well, yes, Dr. Alberts, where's the heart? I mean, you're not going to disappoint us, are you, dear doctor? So? Now, I can explain. If you will step closer and look where I point, you will see inside of this quartz container is the isolated, extirpated chicken heart. <laughs> oh, oh, I see it now. Where? Oh, right in there. Isn't it fascinating? My goodness, it really does look like a chicken heart. And that's what it is. The chicken to whom this heart was a vital organ is dead already for 17 months. But here in this apparatus, a modification of the robot heart developed by Lindbergh and Carroll, this heart has gone on an independent existence, beating away as if it were still part of a living fowl. Oh, can you imagine of that? all things. Unbelievable. <laughs> Through these tubes, as you can see, a constant stream of liquid is flowing to and from the heart. This liquid is called Hartman solution and simulates tissue fluid. You mean it artificially replaces the bloodstream? Yeah, the, the blood. The solution replaces the blood. Oh, but doctor, oh, what my. keeps the, um, the artificial blood circulating? I will show you. Here, in this case, I open it. You see? Yeah, this, this. It's a tiny electronically driven pump. Yeah, what we call a synchronized alternating pump. It drives the life fluid through the heart at 60 beats per minute. And so the heart lives on and on, so the body it came from is long dead. Oh, oh but, but doctor, you don't mean that this chicken heart can go on living forever? As, <laughs> as long as we keep the serum that is circulating through it fresh and at the proper temperature, there is no reason why this heart cannot outlive a thousand generations of all of us. Oh, oh. In fact, if an apparatus such as this had existed in the days of, say, Napoleon, we might today stand and watch the heart of the Frenchman beating away as it did 168 years ago. Napoleon's heart? Imagine that. <laughs> but Dr. Albert, that chicken heart, it isn't really living and eating in there, is it? Most definitely. <laughs> I will put the stethoscope against the chamber you will hear. So, now, listen. Oh. So, now you have heard it. Oh, I did indeed. I Absolutely breathtaking. Oh, oh my God. God. Can you believe it? <laughs> Let me listen, Dr. Alberts. Oh, I want to hear it no, too. First. Oh, no, no, I want to hear it again. I don't know. Oh, me, Dr. Alberts. Oh, no, no, I ask her. No, no, lady. Please, one at a time. No, no, do not push. The apparatus. You will please be careful. Ladies, please. The instruments. They are delicate. You will break. Look out. Oh, 
Good grief. Oh, broken. The experiment ruined. <laughs> well, uh, Dr. Alberts, I mean, we didn't mean, that is, speaking for the ladies, I mean, we didn't mean to harm anything. Oh, oh, get, out. get out of here! Uh, but, Doctor, get out of here, all of you, get out! You have ruined months of work, you silly women. Months of work. See, the apparatus broken, the heart stopped, everything ruined. I don't care if you are trustees' lives. Get out, you women! Get out! Get out! <laughs> well... Mrs. Lewis to see you, Doctor. Lewis? All right, send her in, send her in. Yes, Doctor. Good morning, Doctor. Well, what is it? It's about your symposium, symposium, Doctor. I've got to get the rest of the material. Symposium? Well, don't you remember? Last Friday. Your discussion on the end of the world for that Sunday feature story we're running? You remember we were, uh, interrupted? Your Wolf, I remember it only too well. Those women. Well, I've been thinking about it over the weekend. I mean, I I I've been wondering whether or not you were able to salvage anything. Salvage? You think with so delicate an experiment as with a living heart there, there could be salvage? No, the experiment is ruined. Ruined. Well, it was unfortunate, wasn't it? Ah, it was a lesson. Hereafter, as long as I am head of this institute, there will be no more sightseers to the laboratory. This is a place of scientific work, not a sideshow. This is a Dr. place Alberts, of... Dr. Alberts! What? What's the matter? Well, Dr. Alberts, come quickly, quickly! Quickly? There! What's the matter with you, young woman? Is there a fire or something? It's... It's... Uh, uh, speak up! It's bad! You... You remember you sent me to clean up that mess those women left? Well, well? I... I can't open the door. I, I just can't. Oh, if you cannot open the door, why bother me? Call the janitor. What's the matter with you? No, no, Dr. Alberts, you've got to come with me. It's... It's something else. Something terrible. Terrible? What are you talking about? It's... I don't know what it is, sir, but the corridor is full of the odor of it, and... You can hear it. You can hear it through the door. Oh, come. Come, Dr. Alberts, please. You have to see for yourself. Is everyone going crazy around here? You hear what I have to put up with, Mrs. Lewis? The door to the laboratory is stuck. So this woman goes crazy. But Dr. Alberts... All right, all right. I'll go with you. I'll go with you. Come along, Lewis. Maybe in between acting as a nursemaid to crazy women and crazy laboratory assistants, maybe I can give you the rest of the article on the end of the valve. Come along, come along. Do you smell it, Dr. Alberts? Do you smell it? I don't know. You, Lewis? Well, there is a peculiar odor in here, isn't there? Ha! There is a simple explanation for that. The women last Friday, they knocked over the table. The chemicals. I am so disgusted. Like you say, I, I drove them out and locked the door. Well, here we are. So open the door, young woman. But, but I can't, sir. That's, th there's something holding the door back. Uh, see? It's something soft, yielding, something living. What? I'm not crazy, sir. Listen, put your ear against the door and listen. By golly, I... Please, sir, listen. Uh, yeah, I'll listen. Lewis, 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 listen. Your ear, close to, close to the door. By golly. Ba bump, ba bump, ba bump. Yes, Dr. Alberts, what in heaven's name? What's back there? Come away from the door. What is it, Doc? Hand me that fire axe off the vault. Yes, sir. It, it, it sounded like some sort of pump, didn't it, sir? Eh, va? Yeah, yeah, pump. I, I, I said it sounded like a pump of uh, some sort, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, pump. The axe, sir. Shall I break down the door? No, no, you fool. The hinges. Knock the pin out and the door will fall open. Here, let me. Yes, sir. There, now the other one. So, now stand to one side. Oh, what are you going to do? The edge of the axe in here, without the hinges, the door will fall open. One side. So, ah, here it comes. Stand back. <gasps> Dr. Alberts! Mutter in Himmel! Uh, Doctor, that huge piece of flesh on the floor. Oh, where did 
did it come from? Where? Listen to it, Doctor. Listen, pulsing. Pulsing. Doctor, it is flesh, isn't it? It is flesh. Yeah, it is flesh. A living mass of meal as large as a chair. Oh, my God, Doctor. What is it? It... It cannot be, and yet it is flesh, pulsing. It is the chicken heart. <gasps> but Dr. Alberts, be reasonable, sir. At least let me release the story to my own paper. Oh, I won't color the news. I'll just tell what happened. And do, do we know what happened? Why, why, certainly. That apparatus, Robo Heart or whatever you want to call it, was accidentally smashed. And over the weekend, in some miraculous manner, that little chicken heart, no larger than my thumbnail, grew into a mass of pulsating flesh. A thousand times its original size. Miraculously grew, you say? But in science, there are no miracles. I want to know why it grew, why? But, oh, let me put the story on the wire, Dr. Alberts. We've been friends. I have never presumed on that friendship. But now, I tell you, it's a story that'll- No, no, wait, wait, here is a possibility. What? When those women knocked over the apparatus, it fell against that rack of chemicals. Is it not possible that some unknown combination of those reagents acting upon the tissue resulted in what you choose to call a miracle? This super growth of this heart? This independent existence of an organ outside its own bodily environment? Wait a minute. You mean you think that some of those chemicals that might have fallen on the heart caused it to grow and keep on living without a bloodstream? Yavol, it is the only possibility. But there must be no newspaper publicity, my friend. I must have time, peace, quiet to analyze, investigate. If I can discover the secret of this independent existence, it may be in my power to do wonders for medical science. That... Wait, do wait, 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 do Dr. Alberts, What's, what's that noise? What? Dr. Alberts, come quickly, quickly! What's wrong? The, the heart, the heart! Yes, the heart? It's feeding! Feeding? No, no, that is not possible. Come on, see for yourself! It is not possible, I tell you, it is not possible. Oh, oh, uh, quiet, everybody, quiet now! Stand away from the door. Now then, one of you, you, Dr. Atkins, what is the matter? I. I'm not quite sure, Doctor. I was standing at the doorway here, discussing this with one of the other men of the staff, when suddenly, out of the mass of flesh, a long tentacle of protoplasm thrust itself upward. You mean out of the heart? Yes. With my own eyes, I saw it. It moved out until it reached that case of white mice there, and then it, oh, it wrapped itself around one of the mice. Oh my goodness. Go on. <laughs> then, then the tentacle retracted itself, and the mass of flesh engulfed the mouse. The moment the mouse disappeared into the tissue, the appearance of the entire mass changed completely. Oh, look, Dr. Alberts, look for yourself. Yeah, yeah, I see. The color is changing. Red is gray. Look, Dr. Alberts, the edges, the thing is crawling. Oh. No, 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 it, it is, no, it is not crawling. See, it is growing, growing. <laughs> Donna Venta, what was that? Oh, take her a pace. Everyone stand back. Dr. Alberts, what do we do? It's already twice the size it was. Unbelievable. Hyperplasia of tissues at so rapid a rate it cannot be. But how, how can it grow like that, Dr. Alberts? Just a mass of flesh. What is it growing on? What? Look, look, from the center of it. It's a tentacle of flesh, like before. Yes, yes, I see. A pseudopod. Like from a simple organism, reaching out. What? What is it reaching out for? Groping, groping along the floor. Dr. Atkins, stand back. It might... Uh, look out! Oh! 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 No, 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 it's no, 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 Run! Run for your lives! Run!
Amen. Mr. Rosen, Mr. Rosen, what's going on over there? Uh, why'd you, why'd you ask, ask me? Why should I know? I mean, maybe there's a fire. The fire schmire. Ask me, I don't know. I'm information or something. All I know is I look out my store window and all the watch there's crowds around the place. Fire, murder, ask me, I don't know. Uh, officer, officer, what's going on in there? What's don't. going on in there, officer? Oh. Don't ask me, lady. Don't ask me. Now keep moving. Keep moving. Uh, but, officer, I insist. You simply must tell me what's going on in there. I insist. Okay, lady, then insist. But stay back on these lines while you're insisting. <gasps> How dare you speak to me in that tone of voice? There's murder going on in that place. I know it as sure as I'm standing here. Research Institute. It's a house of murder. That's what it is. I've always known it was. Vivisection and torture and crimes against nature. Against Hello? Hello, give me the chief. Hello, chief. This is Lewis. Listen, get me a rewrite man. The thing's still growing. No, Chief, I tell you the truth. They got squads surrounding the building and nobody seems to know what to do. It's growing so fast that there doesn't seem to be any way to stop it. I tell you, I saw it with my own eyes. The corridors choked with living, crawling flesh. No, no, I'm not drunk. I'm telling you the truth. That little piece of flesh has grown until now it's jamming the building with flesh. All inside the space of an hour. Oh, you've got to believe me, Chief. It's the greatest news story of the generation and here you argue with me. I tell you, it's the truth, Chief. You've got to believe me. You've got to. But Captain, Captain, you must believe me. I tell you, the only hope is to burn the building to the ground at once. Now wait a minute, wait a minute, Doc. Take it easy. I tell you, burn it to the ground. It is the only hope, believe me, it is. That tissue is undergoing constant mitosis. It is proliferating so rapidly that it has choked the building with living flesh. Burn, I tell you, burn. Take it easy, I tell you, take it easy. I sent in a call for the chief. He'll be here any minute. Oh, this mood don't make sense, I tell you. It don't. Oh, you dumb fool! There's no time to waste. Now, wait a minute. There is no minute, there is no second. This thing must be destroyed. Now, while it is confined. Oh, don't you understand? For some reason, I cannot even imagine. This tissue is doubling in size every hour. Do you know what that means? You dumb fool! In another hour, it will be twice the size it is now. And long before that, it will break open the building with the force of its pressure. Doc, what's that? Yes, what's yes, that? yes, pressure of, of the growing flesh will thrust the building aside as it for paper, and then it will be free in the street, you hear me? Free in the street. And then the pseudopods, those tentacles of protoplasm stretching out, it lives on human flesh, you hear me? On flesh. That building must be burned and the crowds must be kept back. Further back, I tell you. Further back or else. Oh, wait, what, what's going on? What's that up there? The building, see? The ball cracking. Get it back, everybody. Get it back, everybody. Get back. Uh, I tried to warn them. Uh, oh, no, it is too late. Oh, too late. Oh, the flesh is free. Ladies, gentlemen, come to order, please. Gentlemen, as mayor of this city, no one realizes more than I do the necessity of immediate action in curbing this unspeakable, unbelievable calamity which has befallen us. And I assure you... Take a speech, Mr. Mayor. 
No, no, ladies and gentlemen, if you please, ladies, listen to me, listen to what I have to say. Please, gentlemen, just a bird, a bird. Wait, people, wait. It's Dr. Alberts of the Research Institute. Let him speak. Step up here, doctor. Good people, listen to me. It was in my institute this horror began. And if you give me the chance, maybe I can stop it. But what is it, doctor? Tell us first what the monster really is. Yes, I will tell you. That great, ever-growing mass of flesh, it is, or it was, a chicken heart. A chicken heart? What? Come on, man. Yes, yes. Yes, chicken heart, I tell you. Chicken heart. Listen to me, you fools. Listen, listen. Oh, I tell you, that mass of flesh was a chicken heart. The tissue of which, for some reason, a mystery of science, is undergoing constant, rapid, accelerating growth. With each passing hour, its growth is doubling. Do you know what that means, you fools? It is now one block in size. Within 30 hours, that cannibal flesh will have increased in size to one square block to the 30th power. In 30 hours, every inch of this whole city will be crushed under that moving flesh. Within 60 hours, it will have covered the entire state. Within two weeks, the entire United States. You ask for the National Guard, I say call out the entire United States Army. Blast this thing off the earth. Bombs, artillery, it is the only way, gentlemen. It is the only way to save the earth. All right, here's the signal. Open them up, full blast. Chief! Chief, look out, the flesh! It's reaching! Ah! The fools! What good is butter? I told them the only hope is bombs. Artillery! General mobilization orders. All National Guardsmen report to your armories. All National Guardsmen report to your armories. General mobilization orders. General mobilization orders. Battery in position, sir. Commence firing on the hour. Yes, sir. 20, 15, 10, 5, 0. Commence firing. Oh, useless. Useless. It has grown too large and it grows too quickly. The flesh is already engulfing the guns. They came too late. Too late. You all right now, Dr. Alberts? Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. Mrs. Lewis, all right. Well, I sure am glad I located you. I, I stalled as long as I could. Another 10 minutes and we couldn't have taken off. Oh, that blast of protoplasm or whatever it was, sucking at the wheels. By the time we left the ground, it was... Yeah, I saw. 5,000 feet. Well, we'll cruise around up here for a few minutes and then head west. It will do no good. Huh? I have told you, like I have told so many, the flesh below, it grows like a mathematical progression. Faster, faster, greater, greater. There is no hope. In the name of all that's rational, Doctor, you don't mean it'll go on and on and on until... Until there is no place more to go. It's the Institute, when it was small. Then there was hope. Fire would have killed it. But now, what can man do? It is like telling the sea to go back. You can't mean it. It must stop growing sometime. It must. Look at it down there, a gray blanket of evil covering everything. No hope, I tell you, none. See how the roads are black with men and women and their children running for their lives? See how the protoplasmic gray reaches out and engulfs them? See how it- Stop, stop it, stop talking like that. I've had all I can stand of horror. Now we'll get away, I tell you, we'll get away. 
the government. They'll, they'll, they'll send bombing planes and, and blast it off the earth. Yes, that's it. Bombing planes, poison gas. Oh, no hope. It will be the same as bombing the ocean. The flesh will go on and on. It is too late. No, 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 I tell you no. Oh, the little men down there did not believe in their doom until it engulfs them. Oh, listen to me, Louis. You remember only a handful of days ago you asked me my prophecy of the end of the earth? You remember my answer? Ah, such scholarly prophecy. Cessation of earth rotation. Mighty sounding astronomical theories. But now, this is reality, Lewis. The end has come for humanity. Not in the glory of interstellar combustion. Not in the peace of white, cold silence. But with that creeping, grasping flesh below us. It is a joke, eh, hey, Lewis? A great joke. The joke of the cosmos. The end of mankind. Because of a chicken's heart. No, no. We won't die. I can't die. I'll, 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 I'll find a safe landing somewhere. I'll, I'll pick a place where... So closes Cloak and Dagger on the Air's production of Arch Obler's classic radio play, Chicken Heart, starring Chris Carter as Dr. Alberts, Nancy Longo as Lewis, and Lakin Weaver as the Chicken Heart.